Hi, welcome to Storymakers. I'm Rocco Steno, and today we have with us Paul O. Zielinski. Hi, Paul. It's good to see you. Hi, Rocco. It's great to see you. Paul has illustrated something like 30 some odd uh, books, but before we start discussing some of your books, the O, Paul O. Zielinski, is it Oscar? No. Uh, is, it, uh, is it Otto? No. Uh oh. Omar? No, and uh, you should now you should say, is it Rumpelstiltskin? And I can uh, stamp up and down and say, the devil told you that, the devil told you that. <laughs> but uh, actually, because of the O, people have gotten me confused with Brian Selznick because they think he's Brian O. Selznick, which he isn't. Uh -huh. But his forebear, David O. Selznick, was an and O. So it's all one big mix up. But I know that David O. Selznick's O stood for nothing. He just wanted to have a middle initial. And now we have Paul O. Zielinski. I just use the O and I don't tell people what it is. You're well known for several of your books. Uh, and Rapunzel won the Caldecott. When it did happen, one of the first things people told me was, you know, now for the rest of your life, you're going to be the Caldecott winning Paul Ozelinski. And I could get used to that. It's a lot of syllables. In addition, three honors. That's true. And uh, they were four. Hansel and Gretel with text by Rick Lesser, and uh, then uh, Rumpelstiltskin with text by me and Swamp Angel uh, by Ann Isaacs. Ah, so. so I'm very proud. Uh, yes. Well, the creation of Rapunzel. Uh, how long was that uh, to actually create this book? Well, it was by far the longest I've ever worked on one thing. Rapunzel was three years start to finish, oh, which really? it was incredibly long. It included a lot of research, a lot of uh, spinning wheels, a lot of stuff not working, and trying over and over and over. It was a book that didn't really want to get made. Well, as the illustrations are wonderful, and, and they're Thank so you. classic. Yeah. Well, I tried to make them look like Renaissance paintings mm -hmm. set in the year 1500 in mm -hmm. something like Italy. I know mm -hmm. there is a story about the hand. This is my wife's hand. It's right. a very accurate, I, I made a very accurate drawing, but... Uh, Was she pleased with it? You know, I don't think I ever asked her. Oh. Deborah, uh, do you yeah. like it? <laughs> and we have probably one of your most popular books. Uh, the Wheels on the Bus, which is a movable book. Is that the correct term, movable? Uh, yes, I actually know from uh, experts, from paper engineers, that it's called a movable book. Uh -huh. There is such a thing as the Movable Book Society, in which I learned that other books, like Rapunzel, is just what they call a flat book. The idea actually came to me when I learned the song from my wife, because I didn't learn it as a kid. I, can can you sing that for us? No. <laughs> <laughs> I could, but then you'd have to kill me. <laughs> when you're very little, you learn by music. And music means movement. And, and, and she was teaching the wheels in the bus with all the hand movements that go with it. And I thought, this is a great song. Somebody should make a book from this song where the things actually happen. You know, the doors do open and shut. Like this. That they do, yes. And the windows do go up and down. The driver does say, move on back. <laughs> that the babies on the bus cry, wah, 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 wah. 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 Right, oh, look because at that. Because they do multiple things. And it's very like real life where the mother is looking back and forth to right, her, yeah. people around her because her kid is a little bit out of control. I don't know if many people realize that you actually did the uh, illustrations for Beverly Cleary's uh, Dear Mr. Henshaw. You're right that people don't know about it, and, and not that they should. It's, of course, it's mostly text, and, but the pictures in it look so totally different from the way they look in The Wheels on the Bus, which look so totally different from Rumpelstiltskin, which look totally different from everything else. People often don't really know me, but they may know the books separately and not put them together. I kind of like that. You know, we were talking about uh, books looking different from each other, and this one looks different from anything else, pretty much. The publishers who were thinking of something sort of like Toy Story mm -hmm. that, would be, that would be round and smooth and look realistic, and I thought realistic wasn't the right way to go. Um, I thought something that was really uh, loose and crazy and nuts, the story is really kind of <laughs> crazy and nutty story, 
It has a monster in it. I thought a realistic picture of a monster who reaches out and snatches part of their landscape away should not look too realistic. Authors and illustrators must become emotionally attached to their uh, books. And uh, do you? Oh, yeah, probably pathologically. Really? So, yeah, I, I can't let go. I, I start working on something and then I get wrapped up in it and I hate to stop. It's, it's kind of a nice reason to have done some books with a sequel or a follow up. I've been lucky enough to do some nice ones. You know, right. Toys books with Emily Jenkins and now then Z is for Moose. Which we uh, have your latest book, which is a sequel, right? That's the follow-up yeah. to Zia's for Bring Moose. Bring it out. It's called Circle Square Moose. I didn't have to let go of Moose. I could just keep on. And he's moose. a fun guy. Uh, he could be a little he thinks so. persistent. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's, uh, he, he belonged in the alphabet book, starting at the letter D and then continuing with pretty much every letter after that until he finally made it in at Z. And here he is insisting that a book about shapes should include moose as well. Right. Um, I the shape of moose, you know, it's uh, hard to define, but yes. if you're moose, it's not that hard. Right. So as soon as you come to the definition of a square, that sandwich you ate for lunch, well, right. he, he, at this point he's not a square himself, he just loves shapes so mm -hmm. much that he eats the sandwich. <laughs> gets in the way and the book tries to get rid of him. Do you know what a triangle is? He says, yes I do, because he's eaten half the square. So how did you actually create these? And I kind of did doodle things in pencil, uh, but then there's a lot of digital uh, stuff too to get the backgrounds that way and uh, flat things, the decorations. Mm -hmm. These are all um, Digital, but the foregrounds are colored in. I basically made myself a coloring book. Can I show you? Sure. You hold this. Okay, putting me to work. Yeah. And here's my tablet. Ah, Nothing very, up my sleeve. Very nice. It's a Wacom tablet. You're, you're a 21st century illustrator there, Mr. Zelensky. I try. Things appear. I can do my doodling. And usually what pops up is a moose. <laughs> Lately, it's just been happening to me. I can't account that, for it, but there it is. Well, so that, that means there's a third book uh, somewhere. Moose pops up. It's just a little bit obsessive. It's kind of easy for the guy to pop in. So, so it seems you can't uh, get away from your characters, no matter uh, how hard you uh, seem to try. <laughs> yeah, but who would want to? I think I, I've had a great time with, with the Moose characters, especially. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to feel a, a little bit strange. Well, don't blame me. <laughs> uh, blame Moose, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. I know that you have a book trailer for this book. It wasn't really your normal trailer where a camera pans across the book and you tell about the book. Moose got into it. A moose got into it and a few other people uh, actually got into it. At least their voices got into it. The first trailer that I made for Z is for Moose started the trend, I thought, and I got my friend Brian Floca to be the voice of Zebra, and he did such a great job. In this trailer, I was interested in uh, typecasting for, for very simple, clear, good reasons, so that when uh, I had to cast somebody as the son, who is a character in the book, um, I thought, well, you know, Chris Roshka's new book is called The Cosmobiography of Sun Ra, so I thought he'd be a great son. Uh, someone had to play cheese. I thought John Cheska would be a pretty good... A, a good choice. Maybe a little stinky, but <laughs> good enough. And for the lollipop, Melissa Sweet seemed to be... Uh, a, you know, I get it. Things <laughs> like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun to put together. And, uh, and I got to sort of string along the book, still some more. It doesn't ever really have to end, does it? No, it doesn't end because you're actually wearing one of your, uh, one of your books, aren't you? Yes, I am. I've been wearing this book uh, shirt that comes from uh, one of my toys books with Emily Jenkins. It's, uh, I made it for Toys Come Home and it has, if you look closely, little, uh, the three toy characters in the book are a rubber ball and a, stuffed buffalo and a plush stingray. So does this look familiar? 
I was wondering where I'd seen that before. That happens to be another fabric that I uh, designed. And, and we had a tie uh, made out of that. And not only a tie, but I also have for my naps a pillow. Rocco, that is beautiful. It is. Yeah, I see it, there are little moose all over it. Yes, he pops, he pops up all over. And I could actually get a plush moose from Merrymakers. Is that correct? That's right. I was really happy that they made a very nice, realistic looking, according to the book, moose. So how did the uh, Selinsky Fabric Empire begin? Well, it began with a t-shirt, and then it went from there to uh, ties. There was a tie for the wheels on the bus, really nice tie for the Random House Book of Humor for Children. There was a tie for Five Children and It by E. Nesbitt, Knick Knack Paddywhack, An Awful Ogre's Awful Day, and The Shivers in the Fridge. And I had fabric printed, including the toys shirt that I was wearing, and this moose shirt, which actually came after this moose shirt. I have two moose shirts. See, it's so a guy can't have enough moose shirts. No, and you know, I hope that there will be many more moose shirts to follow. I think I'm going to have to get a bigger closet. Yes, and, and we match, don't we? Pretty well, yeah. yeah. You certainly are a dandy, Paul. It's okay, Rocco, it's all right that you've just been wearing one thing the whole evening. It's, n nobody will notice. Well, I can't wait to see what you're, you'll be wearing next time you visit us. Whatever my next book is, I guess. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Remember, until next time, give a kid a book in any format. It's right. too bad Deborah wasn't here because then we could have her hand yes. bring, bringing that tablet. <laughs> and I can grab it. <laughs>